Welcome to this virtual training session for the Brooker SkyScan 1272 Micro CT Scanner. My name is Logan Su, and I am the co-director of the Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy Core here at Baylor College of Medicine. Today, we will be providing a detailed discussion on how to operate the Micro CT Scanner from system power on through collecting a series of X-ray shadow projection scans for your experiment. Let's first begin with the overview of the major components of the SkyScan 1272. When you come to the SkyScan 1272 workstation within the OIVN core, you will find the host computer on the right-hand side of the monitors. Over the top is the compact desktop SkyScan 1272 micro CT system with the sample loading chamber located at the center. You will also see four LED X-ray status indicators located on each of the four vibration isolation stands. Next, we'll show you how to power on the system and warm up the X-ray source before setting up the scan. To power on the scanner, simply by pressing the power button on the host computer. The host computer will automatically lock you into Windows 10. No username and password are required. Once the system is locked you in, you can power on the scanner by starting the control software. To start the control software, move the mouse cursor to the SkyScan 1272 control software icon on the desktop. Double-click left mouse button to start the control software. An initialization dialog will pop up on the screen. At the same time, the scanner will be switched on automatically. You will notice all four LED X-ray indicators light up on the vibration isolation stands. The entire initialization process will take roughly 1 minute and 10 seconds. Once the initialization is completed, the progress dialog will disappear, and the full control panel for the software will show up on the screen. After the control software has been turned on, let's first check the status of the X-ray by a single left mouse click on the X-ray on-off icon on the toolbar. After clicking the X-ray on-off icon, the X-ray source will be switched on, and an X-ray sign along with the voltage and the current status will appear on the screen. When the X-ray source is turned on, you will also notice that the LED X-ray indicators on the isolation stands switched from solid white light to flashing between red and white. Once the X-ray is switched on, if the X-ray source needs to go through an aging procedure, an X-ray source console dialog will also appear with the X-ray sign flashing. Aging means warming up the X-ray source by gradually increasing the voltage and the current to protect the lifetime of the X-ray source. After 8 hours of inactivity of the X-ray, the aging procedure will be activated and it will take 15 minutes to gradually warm up the X-ray source. Once the X-ray source is warmed up, the X-ray source will be switched off automatically, and the X-ray source console dialog will close. You will also notice that the LED X-ray indicators on the isolation stands will stop flashing and return to solid white. After the X-ray source has been warmed up, if you switch on the X-ray again by clicking on the X-ray on-off icon, you will see the X-ray sign shows up on the screen with a solid yellow background. At this point, the scanner is ready for imaging, and you can proceed to the next step for sample mounting. Before you proceed with sample mounting, remember to switch off the X-ray by clicking on the X-ray on-off icon before opening the sample loading chamber.
Here are some recommendations for sample preparation before setting up your sample for imaging. For objects that can be imaged directly in air, it can be either mounted directly on the breast sample holder, or you can place your sample in a sample tube and use king wipes to prevent sample movement during image acquisition. For sample that requires to stay hydrated during acquisition, it can be mounted in a sample tube with 1% agarose. This will not only help to prevent sample from dehydration, but will also prevent sample movement during image acquisition. Please discuss with OIVN staffs regarding your sample type and the mounting methods prior to your image training session. Once you have prepared your sample for imaging, on the control software, first make sure the X-ray source is switched off. Then click the Open Close Sample Chamber icon. A progress dialog will appear on the screen. At the same time, the chamber door will slide open. A protection plate will be lowered onto the top of the circuit board and the object manipulating stage will rise to its zero elevation position. Before we proceed further, let's first take a look inside the sample loading chamber. The Skyscan 1272 is equipped with a maintenance-free X-ray source with an adjustable peak energy between 20 to 100 kV. An object manipulator for positioning and the rotation of the object during image acquisition. A 6 positions automatic X-ray attenuation filter changer in front of the 11 megapixel X-ray detector and a visual camera that looks directly inside the chamber that can help you locate your sample. To begin with sample mounting, first we need to place the sample on the breast sample holder. The breast sample holder is either located in the toolbox next to the scanner or it is on the object manipulator inside the sample loading chamber from the previous scan. If it is still on the object manipulator, first we need to release the breast sample holder. Gently turn the breast ring on the object manipulator in a counterclockwise direction. Don't apply significant torsion to the breast ring and the object manipulator which will misalign the calibration and potentially damage the object manipulator. The breast sample holder is now released from the collect on the stage and can be pulled straight up. Before placing your sample onto the breast holder, you can apply a small amount of wax on the surface of the breast mount to help secure your object. The wax can also be located in the toolbox right next to the scanner. Once the sample is securely placed on the breast holder, insert the base of the holder into the central hole of the collect on the object manipulator. Secure the holder by turning the breast ring in a clockwise direction. Again, do not apply significant torsion to the breast ring and the manipulator, as well as do not over tighten the breast ring. Once the sample and the breast holder have been securely mounted, Make sure nothing is left on the top of the protection plate before you close the chamber. Click on the Open Close Simple Chamber icon to close the chamber door. Once the chamber door is fully closed, the progress dialog will disappear. We can now proceed to start setting up the acquisition parameters. First, switch on the X-ray source by a left mouse click on the X-ray icon. After seeing the X-ray sign appears on the screen, click the Grab X-ray Image Continuously icon on the toolbar. The X-ray detector will now start capturing the X-ray transmission signal continuously and display the shadow projection image on the screen. You can also switch on the visual camera by clicking the visual camera icon on the toolbar. This will help you to locate your sample if your sample has low X-ray transmission property. 
After turning on the X-ray and start capturing the transmission signal, next, we are going to put the sample in the middle of the field of view and align the rotation axis of the sample to the center of the detector. To start center and align the rotation axis of the sample to the middle of the detector, first, we'll adjust the elevation of the sample and to make it appear on the screen. There are three different methods to adjust the elevation of the sample manipulator. First method is by moving down to the status bar, pressing the up or down arrow by holding the left mouse button in the elevation column. The sample manipulator will move continuously until the arrow is released. This is useful if you want your object to travel for longer distance. However, it is difficult to move to the precise location with this method. Second method is by a single left mouse click on the elevation column over the number. A magnification and a position dialog will appear on the screen. In this dialog, you can type in the elevation you want the stage to move to. The movable range of the sample manipulator is between 0 to 68 mm, where 0 is when the manipulator is at the highest elevation. The third method is to activate the micro-positioning stage by directly dragging the sample on the screen to move at X or Y axis. When holding the left mouse button and the drag between two points, the software will measure the distance in between and displace it on the screen. To activate the micro-positioning stage along the X or Y axis, hold the control key on the keyboard, press the left mouse button and drag toward the direction and the distance you want the sample to move. Release the control key and the left mouse button at the same time. Then, the sample manipulator will move toward the select direction and the distance. The micro-positioning stage gives you a more precise control to move your sample inside the field of view of the detector. Next, we'll use the micro-positioning stage to align the rotation axis of the sample to the center of the X-ray detector. On the screen, there's two yellow tick marks one at the top and one at the bottom of the center of the screen. This will help you align your sample to the center of the detector. To change the rotation angle of the object, we can either change it by a single left click on the scale at the desired rotation degree in the status bar, or we can again call out the magnification and the position dialog by a single left click on the number in the rotation column and manually type in the desired rotation angle. We can again activate the micro-positioning stage and center the sample at 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees to align sample's rotation axis to the center of the detector. Once the sample is aligned, Bring the rotation back to 0 degree and proceed with determine the desired resolution for imaging your sample. The pixel size on Skyscan 1272 is determined by setting the zoom and by setting the X-ray detector's camera binning mode. Let's first adjust the pixel size to the lowest possible while the entire sample can still be fitting completely inside the detector's field of view. In the status bar, locate the pixel size column. Move to the desired pixel size on the scale and click left mouse button. The system will automatically adjust the sample and the camera position to reach the desired pixel size. You can also call out the magnification and the position dialog again by a single left click on the number in the pixel size column and manually type in the desired pixel size. Once you select the lowest possible pixel size that can fit the entire object in the field of view, 
Check the sample at 0, 90, 180, and the 270 degrees to make sure that when the sample rotates, it is still within the detector's field of view. Then bring the rotation back to 0 degree. This practice is to make sure that when the sample rotates during acquisition, the entire object is still rotating within the field of view. Regions that rotate outside the field of view of detector during acquisition will be cut off and cannot be reconstructed. After setting the pixel size by changing the zoom, next, we'll set the detector's camera binning mode. Skyscan 1272 is equipped with the 11 megapixel CCD camera coupled with scintillator for X-ray detection. And the highest pixel density can be detected without camera offset is 4032 by 2688 pixels. With camera binning, the pixel size will change. The higher the binning, the lower the resolution. However, camera binning can reduce the scanning time and increase the signal-to-noise ratio. To begin your experiment, we recommend binning the camera at 2. This setting will give you the balance of decent resolution, more manageable scanning time and the data size for you to further evaluate your experiment. After we determine the pixel size, next, let's optimize the X-ray transmission through the sample. One key aspect of micro-CT imaging is partial absorption of X-rays by the object in order to generate contrast on the shadow projection images. Too much transmission will reduce the contrast between different densities of the scanned object, while a low transmission will increase the noise level in the shadow projection images. To select the optimized transmission for scanning your object, we will need to evaluate the transmission profile in the control software. To activate the transmission profile line, right-click on the shadow projection image on the screen at the darkest part of the sample. It will then display the maximum, minimum, and the average transmission across the selected line. The goal is to select an attenuation filter with its optimized voltage setting to get a minimum transmission between 10 to 50% for your sample. If possible, aiming for 30% for the minimum transmission while setting up your sample. Skyscan 1272 scanner includes a 6 position automatic filter changer, where you can see the filter options in the status bar. The peak X-ray energy outputs have also been optimized for each filter option. You can select the filter manually in the status bar to inspect for the transmission profile, or you can use the Select Automatically function in the Filter Selection column. This function will select the filter for you based on your sample's X-ray transmission profile. Again. The goal is to select an attenuation filter with its optimized voltage setting to get a minimum transmission between 10 and 50% for your sample. Aiming for 30% if possible for the minimum transmission while setting up your sample. Once you have decided on the filter and the energy selection for your sample, next, we'll set up the scanning options. To set up the scanning options, first, create the target folder to save the acquired shadow projection images. Open File Explorer in Windows and navigate to D or Data Drive. Under the MicroCT Result folder, create a new folder with your name. Inside your folder, create a new folder for your sample. If you have prepared multiple samples to scan, create a folder for each sample. Once it is done, switch back to the SkyScan control software. Click the Scan icon to call out the Scanning Option dialog. 
Click Browse button to open the Browse for Folder dialog. Navigate to D or Data Drive. Under MicroCT Result, select the folder you just created for your sample. Copy the folder name, then click OK. In the file name prefix column, paste the folder name you just created. This will ensure all the shadow projection images have the same file prefix as your folder. Now, let's take a look of how to select the rest of the scanning options. Rotation step determines the angular step size on when will a shadow projection image be taken when the sample rotates. A smaller rotation step can increase the signal to noise ratio. Frame averaging is to set how many images will be acquired at each angular step in order to generate an average image. Increase the frame averaging number will also help to increase the signal to noise ratio. This table here provides a recommendation for you to select the rotation steps and the frame averaging number according to the camera binning mode. In addition, if your sample have low density, Lower the rotation step to increase the signal to noise ratio instead of increasing the frame averaging number. Alternatively, if your sample have high density, increase the frame averaging will help to increase the signal to noise ratio instead of decreasing the rotation step. For the demonstration, we will leave all the other options unchecked. Next, in the pixel size selection, you can again select different pixel size by changing the camera binning mode. Set partial width to 100% and select standard scan in central camera position. After finish selecting all the parameters, click OK and the scan will start. A progress dialog will appear with the remaining scanning time displayed in the status. A series of shadow projection images will be captured into the target folder while the sample rotates at the selected angular step size. Here we are showing a sped up process of a full acquisition process. Once the scan is finished, the progress dialog will close. You can either repeat the sample mounting procedure that we demonstrated previously to scan your next sample, or you can proceed with shutting down the system. In the scenario of the sample is too tall to be covered in a single field of view, or several samples were mounted vertically, one can take advantage of the oversize and batch scanning function. To do this, First, go through the process to set up the acquisition parameters. Center and align the rotation axis of your sample. Determine the pixel size. Then, optimize the transmission through your sample. Once you have gone through the steps, click the Oversize and Batch Scanning icon. The scanner will perform a scout scan by moving the stage elevation from 0 to 68 mm to cover the entire imageable length and the display on the scout scan panel on the left. In the scout scan panel, we can use the same method to measure the length of an object by pressing the left mouse button and the drag between two points. Again, the software will measure the distance in between and displace it on the screen. To select an object for scanning, hold down the control key on the keyboard. Press the left mouse button and drag a vertical line to cover the length that you want to image as one object. Release the control key and the left mouse button at the same time. Then a dialog will appear and ask if you want to add select part into the batch and oversize scanning. Click yes. Then the scanning option dialog along with the batch and oversized scanning dialog will appear. Finish selecting the scanning option. Click OK. Then the scan will be added into the batch and oversized scanning dialog. 
If an object is too long and cannot be fitted into a single field of view, by doing this, the control software will perform multiple tile scans to cover the length along the y-axis. The tile scans can then be reconstructed as one single object later. You can repeat this process to add more regions from the scout scan panel into the batch and oversized scanning dialog if you want to perform batch scanning. Once you have added all the selection, click Start Scan in the Batch and Oversize Scanning dialog. Then the control software will go through the list in the order that you added and perform the scan. After finishing all the scans, you can turn off the visual camera switch off the x-ray source, remove the sample from the sample loading chamber, and close the chamber door. After the chamber door is fully closed, click the X on the window to close the control software. A shutdown dialog will appear and show the progress. Once the shutdown process is completed, the software and the scanner will be turned off. As you will also notice that the LED X-ray indicators on the scanner will be turned off. Next, we'll shut down the host computer by going into the Windows menu. Select the power icon, then select Shutdown. This will complete the power off sequence of the Skyscan 1272 scanner. Alternatively, you can also ask the control software to turn off automatically after the scan by checking the shutdown scanner after scanning and the shutdown computer after scanning boxes in the scanning dialog. The software will go through the shutdown process automatically once the scan has been completed. Thank you for watching the Bruker SkyScan 1272 Micro CT Scanner Training Module. In a separate video, We'll discuss how to use nRecon to reconstruct the acquired shadow projection images into virtual slices through the scan object. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at oivn at